Hello, everybody. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Homeopathic Super Sessions by Dr. Jagos. Today, we'll see the part two of H.A. Roberts, chapter number 29 of disease classification, psychosis. Now, the psychotic manifestations are characterized by slowness of recovery. So everything in psychosis has to do with dullness, sluggishness, and slowness. Therefore, Robert has said that psychotic manifestations are characterized by slowness of recovery. A person constantly slips backwards because of the destructive character of the stigma. Whenever the person gets an acute manifestation. So whenever an acute manifestation is there, the person will always manifest it very slowly. The onset will be insidious. It will be slow. It will be sluggish. It is because of the stigma which the person holds at the background of psychosis. Now, on the mental front, the person is very suspicious. So, suspiciousness is another hallmark of the psychotic mass. He cannot trust himself. He goes back and repeats what he has done or said. So, he is very suspicious. The person cannot trust himself. He does not have the confidence within him. Whatever he does, he thinks he has done wrong. So he goes back and he again sees whether he has done it correctly or not. He thinks that the other person has misunderstood and he'll give the wrong meaning to what he's attempting to convey. He also thinks that when he's talking with the other person, the opposite person has not understood properly or basically he has misunderstood it and he may give the wrong meaning to what he actually has to say. This in turn will lead to jealousy and quarrelsome nature. So another hallmark of the psychotic miasm is jealousy and quarrelsome nature. So suspiciousness, jealous, jealousy, these are the two main hallmarks of the psychotic miasm. There's a tendency to harm others and animals too. So Robert says that also maybe because of this jealousy trait or the quarrelsome trait or the suspiciousness trait, this leads him to harm others and also do harm to animals. It may also produce a worse form of mania depending upon the stigmata embedded in the individual. So a mania may also occur, but it will depend upon which stigma is there in the individual, either of sora, either of psychosis, or either of syphilis. The psychotic patient is also cross and irritable. He is also absent-minded finds it difficult in getting the right words. While writing also, the written words seem to appear wrong. So in writing also is a problem and he cannot write or what he's written, he's, he seems that he has written it wrongly. And whatever he wants to write, he finds it difficult for him to find the right words to express himself. But the memory is good for past events and forgets recent happenings slow mental power. So there is, slug, there is slowness, there is sluggishness, both on the mental level as well as on the physical level. The memory is poor, especially for recent events. While when the syphilitic stain is also present, these people present a picture of holding back their feelings of anger or hate, which threaten to break out into a dangerous manifestation. So when the syphilitic stigma or the syphilitic trait, the trait is also present, with psychosis, then what happens? Whatever feelings of, whatever emotions are there of the patient, say example, anger or hate, they are all suppressed. And then it threatens out to break out into a dangerous manifestation. So therefore they say that the mania may also occur in a psychotic person, which will be quite destructive, provided there is a syphilitic taint at the background. The psychotic person feels better by abnormal discharges. This is a very important modality of psychotic. He feels better by abnormal discharges. The sora, the soric person feels better by normal discharges or are aggravated when the abnormal discharges are suppressed. Or So the, the naturally, if the patient feels better by abnormal discharge, then if the abnormal discharges are suppressed, the patient becomes aggravated. For example, amelioration in general from the return or breaking open of old ulcers or 
bed sores. So the patient feels better by the return of the old ulcers or the bed sores or breaking up of them and markedly better by the return of acute gonorrheal manifestations. So if the gonorrheal, if, if a treating a patient, if the gonorrheal manifestations are again, there's a return of the original symptom, then you know that you're on the right track. So natural eliminations like free urination or even perspiration does not ameliorate. So natural eliminations do not ameliorate the psychotic patient, only abnormal or or abnormal discharges or abnormal eliminations will ameliorate the person. So this is a very important uh, modality which you have to remember. The head symptom of psychotic miasm is generally located on the vertex of the frontal region. So location of the head symptom is, the location is the vertex of the frontal region. Aggravation, lying down and at night, especially after midnight and better by motion. The head symptoms resemble the syphilitic in that they have the night aggravation and there is same type of vertigo at the base of the brain. So again, if the syphilitic stigma is at the background of the, in, the, in a psychotic person, then as you all know that in the syphilitic mechanism, there is a marked aggravation at night. Therefore, you will get marked night aggravations and same type of vertigo as, the, as in the base of the brain. The hair falls out in circular spots, especially of the Beard. So, falling of hair in circular spots, again, it is psychosis. The scalp perspires, so profuse perspiration on the scalp, but there are not the moist mattering eruptions of syphilis. So, this is how you have to distinguish. So, in, the, in, in psychosis, the patient perspires profusely on the scalp, and if, however, the eruptions are there, they are dry. But if it's accompanied by the syphilitic taint, then there will be matted eruptions which are moist. The psychotic manifestations are associated with overgrowth of tissue, then destruction of the tissue. So again, another important hallmark, as I told you in the part one, is there is overgrowth, hypertrophy and hyperplasia, rather than destruction. So destruction will come in syphilitic mechanism, slowness, sluggishness, hypertrophy, hyperplasia, overgrowth, all will come in the psychotic mice. There are many warts and warty growths also. So warts, papilloma, sebaceous cysts, all these are another examples of the psychotic mice. Moles and papilloma may be either syphilitic or psychotic. Again, depends upon what symptoms they have. Deposits of gouty concretions characterize the stigma. So there's a deposit of gout or gouty concretions. Which, which are characteristic of this stigma. The eye neuralgias are aggravated on change of weather, aggravated by change of the barometer or the rainy weather. Another important modality is also in, in psychosis is aggravated by the rainy weather. So therefore we say that the psychotic person, patient has the hydrogenoid type of constitution. That means what is aggravated in the rainy season, cannot tolerate moisture, cannot tolerate staying near the seashore or cannot even eat the plants or rather the fruits or vegetables which are grown near the seashore because of this hydrogenoid type of constitution. So this is another important modality of the psychotic myism also that aggravated by the rainy weather. Nose is generally red with prominent capillaries. There's a loss of smell is there. The turbinates of the nodes are Nose are enlarged. Again, enlargement of the turbinates. Again, psychotic manifestation. Snuffles of children which are moist but without ulcerations or crusts. So there will be snuffles of children along with this nose complaints, but they are without any ulcerations or crusts, which will be depictive of the syphilitic mice. The discharge is purulent, scanty, with a fish brine odor. So this is also very important that the odor in the psychotic miasm will be fish brine. That is a psychotic taint and it will be purulent and scanty. So it's a characteristic odor of the psychotic miasm that is fish brine odor. And discharges are generally greenish or greenish yellow in color. So they are more of the green color rather than the yellow color. So greenish yellow or frankly green in color, the discharges. 
A fever conditions are difficult to treat as they are multi-miasmatic. So Roberts says that A fever is difficult to treat because it may contain all the three miasms, sora, syphilis, and psychosis. The expression is of syphilis and latent psychosis very often with a soric trait. So it says that in hay fever, the expression is of, is of syphilis and latent psychosis, but very often with a soric trait. Psychotic patients are prone to rheumatic troubles. So one of the main action of the psychotic miasm will be on the joints. So rheumatic troubles will be very prominent in the psychotic complaints especially if there has been any attempt to suppress the rheumatic manifestation. So a patient with joint pains are there. If it has been suppressed by local manifestate or by local remedies, by application, by ointments, by massage or whatever it may be, we find the disease travels into the more deeper parts of the body, from the less important parts to the more important parts, from the periphery to the center, that is from the joints to the heart being affected with violent hammering and beating. So again, when the uh, rheumatic troubles are suppressed, then the heart is involved and you get the, and you get rheumatic heart disease, which is associated with the violent hammering and beating. <coughs> so that's all friends for this part. Part three will be coming up soon. So please be, stay tuned for more. Thank you so much.